Oncology. Stefan. Is it? Okay, good. Okay. okay, good. It's a pleasure for me to talk to you today about immunotherapy in hematological uh, malignancies. And we had that discussion before that there might be a correlation between disease entities and how long the talks are. 30 minutes for hematology is not too bad, but I assume 10 years ago it would have been 45 minutes, so it's showing what's going on in the other fields, particularly in solid cancers and in terms of immunotherapy. But nevertheless, there's, there are um, a lot of new exciting data in the field of hematology as well in terms of immunotherapy. And I would like to split my talk in four parts. First, um, I would like to spend some words uh, about the immune response in hemato-oncology. Then I would like to talk about the new class of B-specific antibodies which are um, already approved for clinical treatment in uh, treatment of patients with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. I would like, of course, to talk about checkpoint inhibitors and last but not least about CAR T-cells which are a completely new field and exciting field and a very strong weapon against hematological diseases. And I will start of course, with the question, is there any immune response in hematological cancer or malignancies? There are always um, cons and pros. We know these cons. Cancer is mostly own tissue and there is no uh, immune response. And um, if cancer is clinical, manifest uh, immune system obviously failed. But um, um, we know there are more pros. Uh, in the direction of immune response also in hematological cancers. We know that like in solid cancers, some uh, hematological cancers like uh, lymphomas are infiltrated with non-malignant um, um, lymphocytes. Uh, one example is um, the Hodgkin lymphoma, which is mostly um, which is full of infiltrating cells and there are just a few malignant cells. We know as well that we can treat, control and even cure some of our uh, hematological uh, malignancies. We can treat uh, CML with uh, interferon and immune stimulants. We can treat as well hairy cell leukemia with interferon and can control and in some cases even treat these disease. But the biggest pro I think is um, the success of the allogenic uh, stem cell transplantation during the last 60 years, starting from the middle uh, 1955, um, and still the, the numbers of allogenic genetic stem cell transplantations are increasing and showing how effective it is. We can cure with that um, therapy patients that could not be cured with chemotherapy alone and so we can improve the overall survival for some of our uh, leukemia or lymphoma patients for up to 20 to 30 percent showing how effective the immune system can be if we transplant a completely new immune system. And um, further supported by these data summarized here in a nice review from 2001 showing the uh, probability of, of a relapse of hematological neoplasias after bone marrow transplantation if the donor was an uh, identical twin, the re relapse rate is quite high because the immune system is almost the same. If you deplete a T cells before um, uh, stem cell transplantation, the relapse uh, rate is as well uh, about uh, 50 percent. But if you have a very strong immune response in terms of a graft versus host disease, acute or chronic, um, then you have a less uh, probability for a relapse. That means the active uh, immune system is fighting against the host, but also against the leukemia, meaning there is a graft versus leukemia or lymphoma effect. But um, allogenic transplantation today is non-targeted. We don't know which is the target and uh, what is a neoantigen that is responsible for the induction of the immune response. And uh, there are some approaches um, that have been published um, last year and um, in uh, 2014. Uh, they tried to identify uh, new targets. What they did, they um, they characterized um, the HLA ligandome and characterized new uh, immunogenic uh, tumor-specific peptides 
And the other th uh, thing what we have heard is translate the results from uh, genomic um, approaches into neo, new neoantigens. And I will uh, highlight that shortly. That is the first strategy to identify tumor-specific HLA-connected uh, peptides, which might be um, to, uh, immunogenic. And what they did, um, they um, isolated all HLA molecules via immunoprecipitation, uh, identified the peptides by mass spectrometry, quantified them, compared normal HLA ligandome against um, uh, diseased uh, HLA ligandome, and identified a couple of uh, immunogenic, potentially immunogenic peptides, and then they validate them and, and came up with a couple of new uh, potential immunogenic peptides in different hematological uh, neoplasias like CLL, myeloma, and AMLs have been done all these three Papers are from one group in, in, in Tübingen from the Department of Hematology and Oncology and together with the Institute for Immunology in Tübingen. And here you can, say how many, uh, you can see how many uh, potential or tumor-specific peptides or proteins they identified in AML, myeloma, and CLL. There's a huge number of, of potential candidates and um, that it seems that there's also a um, um, correlation between the number of um, peptides specific for, for tumor and the overall survival. Here you can see uh, the red line is zero or one a peptide or more than one. The black line, there's obviously just small numbers and obviously uh, a difference in overall survival in that study that have to be proved, of course, in, in other uh, bigger trials, of course. But this is first uh, sign for um, how important these peptides are. And uh, Neoantigens, you have heard about it before, they are quite important and we have now the data from uh, all these um, genomic uh, approaches and sequencing approaches and what we know for uh, hematological malignancies is that uh, here you can see uh, the number of mutated mutations per megabase in different types of tumors, probably you know that. Uh, and the candidates that we have heard about before, lung cancer, melanoma, which are induced by, by uh, UV or uh, nicotine, these uh, are, have more mutations uh, compared to um, hematological neoplasias like AML lymphomas or uh, ALL. But nevertheless, there are mutations and there are potential tumor neoantigens and this group have has used this uh, data from the, from the database and analyzed how many potential uh, neoantigens are produced in, in, uh, in, in these different types of tumors. And what you can see here, these are potential uh, binders, um, binders to the HLA uh, system, strong binders with the IC50 below 150 and moderate binders with the IC50 below 500. And what we can see, of course, more mutations, more strong binder, but there are some uh, neoantigens which have, that might have the potential to induce immune response in hematological diseases like chronic lymphocytic leukemia and AML as well. Um, okay, they, they did it in more detail for, for CLL. They looked for mutations, predict with a software uh, whether these uh, peptides, mutated peptides are immunogenic and presented by the HLL. HLA system and then they uh, validated um, these candidates and they found 22 mutated potential new HLA binding peptides in CLL. They validated that and end up with, two, uh, with 12 uh, real functional active uh, neoantigens and they could also show that these um, antigens, uh, there, there is a um, um, T cell response um, in these patients after uh, allogenic cell, stem cell transplantation in CLL patients for the mutated peptide and that is, I can't go in detail here, but there is an uh, interferon gamma uh, spot number here after transplantation here is, is rising for the mutant peptide and there is no uh, increasing response for the wild type peptide. So there might be uh, some uh, interesting peptides and targets. What is about um, so I can't see the heater, don't know why. Anyway, okay. Uh, the next slides are about the expression of PDL1 uh, checkpoint inhibitors in uh, hematological neoplasias. What we can say is there is, compared to solid cancer, the, the number of uh, PDL expressing tumors is 
low compared to solid cancers. And, but uh, there are some lymphomas like Hodgkin lymphomas, this is a classical Hodgkin lymphoma, or particular the mediastinal large B cell lymphoma that harbor amplification of 9 P21, which is responsible or where, where the PDL1 and 2 are located and expressed stronger when this region is amplified. So there is for some tumors, but for most of the lymphomas, there is no increased expression of checkpoint uh, proteins or genes. And here's another mechanism how um, PDL1 is overexpressed in lymphomas. Here is um, so called post transplation lymphoproliferative disease, which is frequently. Um, transformed by EBV. So after transplantation, the immune system is down, EBV is reactivated and can induce this lymphoproliferative disease. And even if there is no amplification um, of 9P24, there is a high expression of PDL1 in this particular very rare type of lymphomas. And that is based on the EBV uh, effect on the promoter of PDL1. So different uh, aspects of how um, checkpoint inhibitors are upregulated in uh, hematological neoplasias. So, okay, I said that before, but <coughs> if we, can, can we try to, there's no, one second. So normally you should see that. Hmm. Anyway. Okay, next slides are about um, the potential topics I would like to talk about when I talk about immune therapy and hematological neoplasias. Of course, allogeneic stem cell transplantation and optimized new antibodies. We have a couple of new, highly effective antibodies which we use in the, in the clinics, but I can't go into detail for that uh, two topics. I would like to focus on uh, bites, checkpoint uh, control inhibitors, and CAR T cells. And I We'll start with um, the bites, so uh, B-specific um, antibodies. You can see um, these antibodies, um, they have a, a binding uh, domain for one target uh, on the tumor cell. In that case, is CD90, which is expressed on almost all uh, B-cell neoplasias, and the other domain comes or is uh, recruiting uh, T cells by binding of CD3. And in that way, um, this bite, this B-specific antibody, um, brings tumor cells, lymphoma cells, and T cells together. And as you can see here, then, the so-called immunological synapse is formed, and tumor cells can be effectively killed. And um, here are some the summary of the recent um, clinical trials using uh, CD19, um, CD3 antibody for the treatment of uh, ALL and Hodgkin lymphomas. This is a so-called blinatumumab. You can see here in 20 patients, first study um, published in 2012, patients with a acute lymphoblastic leukemia which have a um, molecular relapse, meaning in, under the microscope we could not detect a relapse. But using quantitative PCR, using an MRD marker like rearrangement of IGH or T cell receptor, the relapse could be detected and the patient could be treated with a continuous infusion of the splenatumumab uh, antibody, B specific antibody. And uh, that's quite impressive. Um, there was a CR read uh, of more than of about 80% in these patients, and after uh, 33 months, more than 50% of the patients were without a relapse. So it can control and probably cure this disease when the disease is detected at the molecular level. That's what we do in the clinics. We always try to detect the relapse on the molecular level before we have the full-blown relapse of the disease. And why we do that, you can see it here. There's also two studies with ALL, uh, much more patients, continuous infusion of plenatumumab for four weeks two weeks break, four weeks infusion, for max four infusion, for max four cycles. And here you can see if there is a, a real ref, um, refractory or relapsed leukemia with more than 20% um, of plus in, in the bone marrow, um, there is a response, a CR rate of 70%, which is amazing for this um, highly refractory disease. However, the 
uh, it's not a long-lasting um, control of the, of the disease. Uh, so overall survival is about six to uh, ten months. Okay? The disease can be controlled, but probably not cured with this type of, um, of uh, antibodies. And I will show later on one or two cases showing um, exactly that. And there are also first data, as you can see, is other different compared to solid cancers, 21 uh, diffuse large B-cell lymphomas, or here 35 patients with a mix of different types of lymphomas, but there's also a response for lymphomas that have been treated with several lines of therapy and they're uh, refractory to all types of um, approved drugs, and there are several studies ongoing combining these um, CD19, CD3, B specific antibody with chemotherapy or antibody therapy frontline and in relapse situation. I believe that will strongly improve in the future the treatment of uh, B cell neoplasia. There are also new uh, B specific antibodies for um, myeloid um, 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 markers uh, or for other uh, lymphoid markers like CD20, uh, CD, CD30, um, and hopefully we will have further new. Um, drugs to improve treatment of our patients. And that is one case of a um, 32 years old um, male patient with a B lymphoblastic leukemia. What I'm showing here is, um, are the results of the MRD PCR. So we, we detect the minimal residual disease uh, over the time of the course of the uh, therapy. What we can see here, after the first course of therapy, the patient went in complete molecular remission. But after a couple of weeks, under, under the next cycle of chemotherapy, the patient relapsed under chemotherapy. And the prognosis of these type of patients is uh, really pure poor and um, uh, then we, we got in contact with MGIN and um, could um, get blinatumumab in a compassionate use program for that patient and here that is a full-blown uh, recidive of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. We started with a continuous infusion of blinatumumab and after two weeks we did a bone marrow puncture and there was no um, leukemic cells detectable by PCR in the detection range of 1 times 10 Minus, minus seven, so one cell, one out of uh, 10, 10 million, so that is amazing. I have never seen such a effective therapy uh, for um, chemotherapy refractory uh, resistant disease. That was really amazing, and, but we had to stop therapy after the third uh, cycle due to neurological side effects, which are known for this type of antibodies. They are as well known for CAR T cells. And um, then, but we could bridge the patient um, until allogenic uh, transplantation, and unfortunately, he relapsed after allogenic transplantation uh, immediately with a CD19 negative disease. Um, so, the clonal evolution the, the, after the treatment with the CD19 antibody, the uh, uh, disease relapsed with a CD19 negative disease. Here's another patient, up and downs of the AMRD marker of a, uh, um, acute lymphoplastic leukemia, and two uh, cycles of allogenic, uh, allogenic stem cell transplantation, and then the relapse, and, and we treated with uh, low dose chemotherapy, and then um, we could get these patients as well in the compassionate use program and started binatumumab uh, therapy, but there was no response on um, binatumumab infusion. And then we checked. Um, we ask why the, the disease was CD19 positive, so one target is there, and, uh, but there were, there were no T cells. The, the patient was almost uh, lymphopenic uh, due to all the other uh, chemotherapies and transplantations and so on, and there was uh, the, the B specific antibody could bind um, the leukemic cells, but there were no T cells. And um, in that setting, there's the idea to combine these antibodies maybe with, uh, with TLI, with donor lymphocyte infusion, or um, other strategies to, to have um, T cells um, to uh, target the cells. Maybe in that situation, it's also better to use CAR T cells. These are, you can infuse, uh, infuse T cells. That is one option, okay? So one explanation. Checkpoint inhibitors, I said before, uh, low expression but high expression uh, in general, but in some types like Hodgkin lymphoma, high expression of PDL1, uh, and there was one trial, about 20 patients uh, after several lines of treatment, uh, they got um, an evolumab, and, and there was a 
overall response rate of 87%, uh, and um, for some patients also a complete remission, and that is, of course, for this type of uh, patients, a uh, huge improvement of treatment uh, options. Okay, in lymphomas with the expression of, of uh, PDL1 axis, there is an effect of uh, checkpoint inhibitors. N numbers are low, of course, compared to lung cancer or melanoma and so on. And here are some, that's a summary of uh, other trials um, using checkpoint inhibitors for other lymphomas, follicular lymphomas, response rates 40 persons. Even there is no PDL1 amplification, but there is in the tumor infiltrating tissue, there are PDL1 uh, infiltrating cells which are not clonal, but which support the clonal uh, cells. And if they are um, targeted, it seems that they can control the tumor as well. Some effectivity in T cells, Hodgkin lymphoma again, another trial, and yes, there is some uh, efficacy. There are a couple of trials ongoing. I can show that, can show that here, uh, 14 trials in lymphoma with nivolumumab, 15 uh, trials with uh, bembolizumab, um, and, and the other um, inhibitors of uh, PDL1 or CTL4 are also inactive clinical trials for lymphomas. Last but not least, CAR T cells, the chimeric antigen receptor T cells. What is that? These, these are um, ex vivo generated T cells with a new receptor um, targeting CD19 in, in, in lymphoma or leukemia patients with an intercellular T cell activating domain. And what you need for that is you have, of course, first to isolate T cells from the patient, uh, to engineer and overexpress um, the CAR gene, and then to retransfuse um, the T cells after chemotherapy for lymphodepletion. And then these cells can proliferate and can be active against, um, against lymphoma or leukemia. And there are different types of CAR T cell receptors, first generation with just one SETA activating domain in the cytoplasma, and the new generations have co-stimulatory domains which are much more active to, to, prolif to induce proliferation and of T cells. And in that case, um, uh, they have detected a proliferation of these T cells for over one year. And so we have a long lasting activity of these tumor cells, which can't be of advantage, but as well of disadvantage if you have side effects. Okay. There are a lot of uh, experimental things ongoing to optimize the therapy, to optimize safety. So the question is how we can inactivate the T cells when uh, side effects appear. There are some uh, things ongoing and other things are to induce long-lasting proliferation, overcome immune suppression. Uh, these are the several things um, ongoing to optimize the therapy and to combine uh, even with other immunotherapy approaches. Okay, I will skip that. Here are the results from the first clinical trials in acute lymphoplastic leukemia. Um, have been done, all of them, in, in U.S. with uh, impressive results for refractory um, disease. Ninety percent have shown a complete remission, and, and some of them are still in remission others uh, relapsed, but it seems that that is really a highly effective therapy with severe side effects like neurological side effects or the cytokine release syndrome. Okay. We had the discussion before how uh, cortisones can affect immune therapy and have been shown here for these uh, CAR T cells that if you treat uh, uh, cytokine re release syndrome with cortisone for more than uh, 14 days, the number of CAR T cells is going down and so the efficacy is probably low. That's different for, uh, for the um, uh, B-specific antibodies. You can treat uh, neurological side effects with high-dose dexamethasone without inducing uh, a reduction in efficacy. Yeah. That is, depends from type of therapy. Okay, that is also active in CD19 positive myelomas. Uh, I'm showing that because myelomas are normally, here we can see the malignant cells, uh, CD34 positive, uh, CD38 positive, CD35 negative, clo clonal, there's just one uh, light chain expressed, but no CD19. But uh, CAR T cells against CD19 were active to control uh, myeloma um, in, in that clinical trial. And that is amazing. Probably that is targeting these cells, and these are maybe 
the tumor initiating cells or something like that. that. So not all of the cells have to be positive for the target. That is the message of that um, uh, clinical trial. There are other CAR T cells against myeloma um, um, in clinical trial against the B cell maturation antigen. Seems to be highly effective, presented at ASH last year. And um, here, just la last slide to show what are the differences or advantage, disadvantage of CAR T cells or uh, by uh, B specific antibodies. And, and uh, efficacy, they are all effective in, uh, uh, in, in, in lymphomas or leukemias, response rates over 50% uh, for diffuse large B cell lymphomas. Here is a bit lower, but effective as well. Um, the duration of the effect, stable transaction over, over months, months, that means you can't control if you have side effects. Uh, and here is short life. The B-specific antibodies have a half-life of two hours. That's why we have to uh, infuse that uh, continuously with a pump. A uh, patient has a pump for four weeks and then uh, a break for two to four weeks and, and again. So, and uh, disadvantage may be, but if you have side effects, you can um, shut off the pump and after two hours there's no blinatumumab and no side effects in most cases anymore. Um, availability, of course, is more time consuming to generate CAR T cells. They are, you just have to order um, via the pharmacy. Lympho depleting chemotherapy, you have to perform before CAR T cell therapy, before bites you don't have to. And safety, there are these neurological side effects up to grade three, grade, uh, grade, three, grade four. And, and, uh, and particularly in CAR T cells, you have this cytokine release syndrome, but, but, but which you have in um, bites as well. But you can control it here quite easily with um, stop of infusion. So that brings me to the end, and thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>